In this problem, two people are pushing a disabled car. One exerts a force of 200 newtons east, and the other exerts a force of 150 newtons east on a frictionless surface. And what the problem is asking us to do here is to start off by drawing a free body diagram. So letter A is going to say, draw a free body diagram. And we'll start off with that. We'll go then from drawing a free body diagram to determining the net force exerted on the car. And lastly, we're going to determine what the acceleration of the car is. So let's start out by drawing a free body diagram. A free body diagram on a car does nothing more than illustrate all of the forces acting upon that object. In this case, we're going to draw the car as nothing more than a box. All right, we've already said here that there's a, there's a surface here we're pushing the car along. All right, so there's my surface, and you could label it the car. It really doesn't matter. But in this case, two people are pushing a disabled car. Now, two people are pushing. They're pushing in the east direction. Now, if you know anything, guys, I think we know that north is up, all right? And east is going to be this way. So that's east, and that's north. And the people are pushing towards the east. So we're going to draw an arrow indicating the force, all right? So we have someone pushing to the east, and they're going to be pushing to the east with 200 newtons of force. That's a right word or eastward force. The other person is also contributing a force in that direction too. They're contributing 150 newtons to the east or rightward. So all together, as you can see, I have 350 newtons rightward. Now, in order to complete my free body diagram over here, I need to include the other forces involved too. Adding on this object will be the force of gravity, also known as the weight of the object, and that's going to be equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity. And the other force is going to be the normal force, or the force also known as the force perpendicular, perpendicular to the surface here. So that takes care of our free body diagram. We've also been told that this is a frictionless surface, so we don't really have to worry about a force of friction that might have been working in the leftward direction. The question is asking us here, what is the net force exerted on the car? What is the net force? Well, what I want you to see here, guys, is that this car is going to not accelerate upwards because we have a force normal and force gravity canceling each other out. And so the net force I'm going to also call as the F net. All right. So in this case, the F net is going to be equal to the sum of, I mean sum, adding up the sum of all the forces, F1 plus F2 plus F3. And what we're really trying to say is that it's the sum of all forces involved. That is the F net. It takes into account every single force. But it really only takes into account the X and the Y axis individually. So if I look at the F net in the Y axis, what you see here is that I have the force of gravity, which is negative, and it's going to be canceled out by the normal force. And we kind of know this because this car is not you know, accelerating upward, it's not accelerating downward. And so altogether, the forces must equal zero newtons. Okay, The sum of forces in the y dimension is zero newtons. The sum of forces in the x direction, that's the F net in the x, well in this case, guys, check this out. We have 150 newtons going rightward by the one person. We have 200 newtons by the other person. So altogether, the net force in the x direction is going to be 350 newtons. Now you're going to see that's not canceled out by any force on this side of here. There's no force of friction. So what this means is that I have an unbalanced net force. So what is the net force exerted on the car? Well, the net force exerted on the car is 350 newtons. And that's going to be, let's put a direction on this, rightward or to the east. And so I'm going to just clean this up a little bit here and just call it rightward or east. We definitely want to make sure we have a direction on our newtons. It's a vector, uh, this is a vector and therefore it needs a, a magnitude such as 350 newtons, but also a direction too. And lastly here, if the car has a mass of 185 kilograms, all right, so that's the mass here, what is the acceleration? 
Well, before I said the F net was going to be 350 newtons. The other part of F net is this. The net force of an object is going to be equal to its mass times its acceleration. So let's just make a substitution here. F net is going to be equal to the mass times acceleration. Well, the mass in this case is, I've informed us, is 185 kilograms. All right? It's 185 kg. So the mass is 185 kilograms multiplied by the acceleration is going to give me the F net. And the F net a second ago, we said was 350 newtons right here. So we said that a second ago. So really, 350 newtons is equal to 185 multiplied by A. And if we rearrange this algebraically, and I'm just going to have to bring this guys over here now. So acceleration, I'm rearranging it, equals 350 newtons divided by 185 kilograms. Let's divide 350 by 185, and we're going to find out what our acceleration is in this case. And let's rearrange this algebraically and draw it in blue. So we're solving for acceleration. The acceleration is going to equal 350 newtons divided by the mass of 185 kilograms. And let's bust that out here, guys. And so 350 divided by 185 is going to give us 1.89 meters per second squared is our acceleration. And so let's get a little recording of that. And you're also going to note that that is also an eastward or rightward acceleration. The thing you're always going to find here is that wherever the F net direction is, the F net was east, the acceleration of the object is east. This object is accelerating, going in this direction, and is going to be getting faster in that direction too. All right, guys, let's go over this one more time. The summary here. The first thing we did is draw a free body diagram. The free body diagram introduced every single force that the object has. And so if we look at uh, this little free body diagram over here, every single force, the normal, the gravity, and the two applied forces are listed here. There was no friction. It was a frictionless surface. So we figured that out. That kind of is key because once you get that, you then can look at the net force. The net force you have to examine on a y-axis, compare these two, and then you also have to compare the forces on the x-axis. And that's kind of what I tried to do here. We had the forces on the y-axis and the forces on the x-axis. We found out that on the y-axis, the forces were balanced. When they're balanced, that means there's no acceleration caused in the object due to these forces. The net force on the x-axis, though, we realized was not balanced. There is nothing going in this direction to counteract the 200 newtons and the 150 newtons applied force. So we found out that the F net was going to be 350 newtons. Now that's kind of right here. F net is 350 newtons. So when I ask you what is the at the required mass of 185 kilograms, what is the acceleration? Well, I just used the formula F net equals mass times acceleration, right here. And I literally had to solve for acceleration. I was given 350 newtons from the previous part of the problem, 185 grams from over here. And we literally rearranged the problem and said acceleration equals the newtons divided by the mass to give me 1.85 meters per second square east. All right, guys, that wraps up the problem. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Hopefully it was helpful.